Britain have some of the most congested roads in Europe. And it's the emergency services on two wheels that can sight through the traffic and get vital help where it's most needed, fast. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up, a Go woman's on. been in a seizure Talk for 30 me. minutes and won't Come respond. On. Talk to me. Biker cop Lucy helps restrain a man reportedly wielding an axe. Oh, what, they got more rights than me, have they? And Oxford biker paramedics race to a man hit by a bus. <laughs> 7 a.m., Birmingham. And the biker paramedics are getting ready for another 12 hour day. But Mark Hayes is looking forward to having Steve Harris around at the weekend. Whatever you do, don't get some bathing line on the grass because the kids will get confused, which is the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go then. It's going to save a life. A 999's coming in. Mark's on call. Reports of somebody fitting in Aston. Fits or seizures can be lethal if left untreated. It's thought that around 40 people die every month in the UK during an epileptic fit. Mark needs to get there fast. On his Yamaha FJR 1300, he can sprint across town quicker than an ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras, so we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. Hello. Can you have me see you now, Paul? What's the name? Dawn Christie. Dawn. Dawn. Okay. Dawn had just come to the kitchen when she suddenly dropped to the floor. Okay. Dawn, talk to me. Come on now, talk to me. If you talk to me, I can help you. Dawn's been unresponsive for more than 25 minutes. Dawn, you're gonna to talk to me. Talk to me. Hmm? You're gonna to talk to me. Come on, my love, you're blinking away. Talk to me. My name's Mark and I'm a paramedic. Yeah? Do you understand what I'm saying? Hmm? While Mark's trying to get some reaction from Dawn, an ambulance arrives. If she doesn't come round soon, they'll need to rush her to hospital for specialist treatment. How are we doing? Well, right, Mark? According to her partner, recently, Dawn's seizures have become much more serious. They've lasted longer, and she sometimes chokes or bites her tongue. She's now been completely unresponsive for over half an hour. She's starting the shaking, but she's blinking. There's no rigidity, and she's swallowing. Dawn, I'm just going to have to take some blood from your finger, all right? Dawn, can you talk to me? Hello. Come on, one villa fan to another. You're gonna talk to us. You're not gonna smile there. I got a smile look. Do you see that? Huh? <laughs> see? If you were a blue nose, it'd be different, huh? You're gonna talk to me. Huh? There we go. That's good enough, you've said something. Huh? That's good enough. That'll do me. Mark's blue nose reference well, to Birmingham City enough? fans does the trick for Aston Villa supporter Dawn. Got a headache. No. Can you tell me which is the best West Midland football team? <laughs> there we go, I got her. I got her. <laughs> Gentleman tells us that you, you've had a, a seizure, right? And he was concerned it lasted some 20 odd minutes. And that's why we've been called. Do you understand that? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to be popping you off to hospital. That to us is a prolonged fit. Yeah? Okay then, let's just sit you up nice and slowly, alright? Not become. Apart from the headache, any other symptoms? You got any pain anywhere? No? Huh? You got back, back pain. Okay. Should we get you into that chair? We'll get you onto the ambulance and we'll have a proper look at you. Yeah? All right. Ooh, there we go. There are as Pop many as 50 types of epilepsy, 
all caused by scrambled electrical signals in the brain. Around half a million people in the UK suffer from epilepsy, and Mark has nothing but admiration for people like Dawn. The way I feel is, is it's like any other um, ongoing medical condition, um, for example, diabetes. They've got to be a strong individual um, to cope with this condition, and, um, and I, I think the way they go about their lives is as normal as possible. I take my hat off to them um, because it, for those that suffer with regular fits, it's, it's a hard condition to live with. Still to come, the dangers of first on the move. If you're doing 60 mile an hour and he suddenly breaks hard or hits something, you're going to crush the baby. Oxford paramedics race to help a man hit by a bus. And a surprise for Steve Harris. He's happy and that doesn't happen very often and we can see, look, he's just, he's there with a dirty big grin on his face. <laughs> Britain's largest counties, crisscrossed by high-speed dual carriageways. Patrolling today, PC Steve Clements. He's looking out for anything that can endanger drivers and passengers. Today he's on the A12, and it's not long before he spots something. The reason I've stopped you today, yeah, yeah is because I could see you leaning forward and head down, right? Yeah. Then I've driven up next to you and I could see that you uh, were you feeding the baby? Yes. Okay. Why haven't you stopped to feed the baby? Because we didn't know that we have to stop. Well, the baby's... Why is... Alright, let's ask us, who's in danger if there was an accident? The baby both Well, the both baby more, yeah. yeah? You're already leaning forward. Yeah. If your husband had to brake hard, yeah, you're going to keep going forward. So if you're doing 60 mile an hour, and he suddenly breaks hard or hits something that's going a lot slower, you're going to continue at 60 mile an hour into the back of this. This will collapse it and you're going to crush the baby. Okay? You should have stopped, yeah? When I came next to you, yeah, I believe you'd, um, were you breastfeeding? Yes. You were breastfeeding to the right, yeah? yeah. And then when I came up to you, you swapped over and you were starting to breastfeed on the left, yeah? So you were actually continuing. Yeah. You didn't put it there. Do you not think the baby should be in the carrier while the car is moving? moving? Yeah, while the car is moving, where should the baby be? Okay, if something happened, and this has happened, you as the parents are responsible for this, this young girl. I appreciate that, but pull over, feed the baby, and then carry on. Yeah, in safety, knowing that you're going to be in safety. Not while you're driving along in the rain, yeah? And so as parents, you're responsible for this child, yeah? So I'm going to do with your husband. You want to carry on and feed the baby while we're stationary, yeah? And then we'll leave you to that, okay? I'm going to do this for carrying your child as you are, yeah? It's what's carrying, it's carrying the passenger in a dangerous position, okay? If there had been an accident, the child would likely be injured, very likely, from the fact of your wife mm -hmm. crushing the baby because she would leave and she would crush the baby and the baby would suffer some injuries, okay? And I need to understand the seriousness of the, of the offence, okay? As dad, you're going to be telling her not to do things that are dangerous, aren't you? Yeah, not to touch the cooker, yeah, not to touch hot water, yeah, and things like that. You're gonna be looking after, okay? Well your responsibility starts now, okay, with how you carry her in a car. Okay. Clem's giving the man a sixty pound fine. I think she's just finishing the baby, so obviously don't move off until the baby's been fed and put back in his carrier. Alright All then? Okay, okay. cheers then. Okay. So you're happy and full now, are you? Yes? <laughs> you're shy now. Okay, so you need to understand, if you need to do that again, yeah. find somewhere to stop. There's loads of lay -bys. stop and pull over. It's just for the baby. Yeah, I don't want to come to an accident and find you and how you would feel if you'd had an accident. Okay? Yeah. All right then. Okay, cheers. Sometimes when she's crying, we don't know how to react and we do mistakes. Over 300 babies are killed or seriously injured in car crashes in the UK every year because they weren't properly restrained. It's something that never fails to rattle father of two, Clem. I'd have to say that children now, uh, not, you know, not being safety, not being looked after, is, really does bug me because 
we're responsible as children. It is our job to look after them, it's our job for their safety. And, um, and parents have got to do it. You know, it's, I, I know she was saying that the child was crying, but as I said to you earlier, this is the A12. It's not a motorway with 20 miles between junctions. There's slip roads, there's laybys, there's everywhere she could have stopped to feed the baby. Um, but she took the risk to uh, take the baby out of his carrier. She's aware that she has a seat clear. That's where the baby should be. That's, where the, that's what they're designed for. They're designed that if there's a crash, that little girl is going to survive. A lot of people do that inside the car. They get inside that cocoon and they feel safe in there. But again, it's not them. If he's driving along, he's driving very sensibly. He's doing like 70 mile an hour, lane two. You know, the, sitting there and he's, he's doing very sensible. But it's not him. It's somebody else does something and he has to brake very quickly. That's the idea of safety equipment in the car, is to protect you against what other people do. A hundred miles west of Essex, the city of Oxford. A population of 150,000, a quarter of the adult residents are students. In the centre of town, based in a porter cabin at the station, is a lifeline for permanent residents and visitors alike. It's the HQ for paramedic Eddie Webb and Barry Pritchard, the emergency bikers of the South Central Ambulance Service. It was quite a handy place to be, really. And uh, this is where we sit and wait for the calls. And there's soon one for Barry. A young man's been hit by a bus. This sort of impact could mean anything, from concussion to paralysis. Barry sides through the city, covering a mile in just under two minutes to be the first paramedic on scene. Bystanders have been looking after the man until help arrives. Hello there. What's your name? Leo. Just have a look at your head a minute, Neil. Can you just lay it nice and still for me, if you can? Neil hit his head on the pavement when he fell and is rapidly well, losing blood from the injury. Yeah. Have you hurt yourself anywhere else? No. Just basically your head. Is your neck or your back hurt at all? No. Do you remember everything that happened? Put your head nice and still for me, Neil. Neil's very confused. A common result of head trauma. Looks like you've crossed the road, Neil. You got clonked by a bus, I think. Open your eyes wide. Can you see me all right? Yeah. Right, OK. Just gonna press down your back and your neck. Is there any pain when I'm pressing at all? No. Even when vehicles hit pedestrians at low speeds, injuries to head, neck or back can be life-threatening. Feel that leg? It's crucial that Neil's really given a thorough check over in hospital as soon as possible. Yeah. Right, let's just have a look at your hands a minute. You've done something to those, haven't you? If I just squeeze your ribs and take a deep breath, does that hurt anywhere? This is Neil, hit by a bus, oh, crossing the road. Can you, ta can you take his head while I take it on? What I want to do is treat you for the worst. I don't think you have hurt your neck or your back, but we're going to put a collar on you, just in case, all right? Then we get you off this cold road. Yeah. Right here, I think you got clumped. Hit by a bus, I think. Oh, I think, Jesus. I think you've been knocked out as well. He's a little bit vague about events of what's happened. Okay. How old are you? Your head relaxed for me. That's good. Back your head on. Right now. Back your head. Oh. You got pain in your chest? No, it's not a head. Right, and Neil, what we're going to do, mate? Because you've been because of your mechanism of injury, and you've obviously took a bit of a tumble. Yeah. We're going to keep you very straight. We're going to put you on uh, one little stretcher to get you onto our other one. Then we will get you off the cold road. All right. Ready, steady, grow. Ready, steady, grow. Okay, do it on roll then. Ready, steady, grow. Just relax, Neil. And then we'll go back and roll. Ready, steady, grow. They must keep Neil's back completely straight as they move him, in case he's damaged his spine. Something hit me, or a fall. Traffic accidents cause almost half of all spine injuries. Okay. Yeah. Ready, steady, lift. Is there anyone you want us to contact? Oh, there's a lot. I've got a phone with a bus, I've got a phone. Okay, is there anyone, any maybe family or anyone like that you want me to keep a call just to let them know where you're going? Okay. Well, I do. Yeah. Give those guys a call right. on the 
Yeah, that should be my mum or dad, that, that one. That should be my dad, alright. I'll let them know. Go. We're not going to mess about here to get you up to hospital. Officers come up and see you up there, alright? These guys will look after you. They're much better at doing it than I am. I think you were crossing the road, Neil, carrying a big heavy thing of glue. Yeah. It looked like you um, got clonked by the bus. That's what I'm guessing happened. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't here. I'll find out from the driver of the bus. I'll go and ask him. Yeah, it's been really great. The severity of Neil's injuries could depend on how fast the bus is going. Are you the bus driver? Yeah. Can you just tell me just basically what happened? Did he just fall across the road or? Yeah, he was uh, carrying the jerry can. Yeah. Yeah, he, did, he was calling like that. Right. I, I didn't think of he gonna, he gonna cross the road. Right. So just, he just came and then he was caught yeah. by the side of the bus. He did, he did just by the side of the bus. Yeah, he he didn't go underneath it or anything. No, no, no. So no, it's no, just the no. front corner hit, pushed him over sort of thing. Just by the side after the door. Okay, so, lovely. Yeah. How fast have you been doing? Just sort of 20 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour? About 10 to 15 miles. Um, the corner of the bus has caught him at about 10 miles an hour and sort of give him a good shove and he's hit his head on the pavement. So it's pushed him over there. Yeah, the bus driver said he was doing no more than 10, 15 miles an hour. His pupils were both reacting and he was beginning to regain his memory while I was talking to him, so he seems to be coming out of it a little bit. Um, but they will treat and assess him and probably keep him in for observation because of the head trauma. It's not the first time Barry's seen this kind of accident. We do get quite a lot of um, pedestrian accidents, mainly in Oxford, because we've got a, a very large population of students, a lot of them from abroad. They tend to look the wrong way when they're crossing the road, because England, unfortunately, drives on the opposite side of the road to everybody else. And that takes a, get, a bit of getting used to. Birmingham. Mark and Steve are off on an unusual outing. Today's a special day because um, Steve's getting uh, his own motorbike uh, operationally. Um, so uh, we're off to Coventry to go and collect his, uh, his new baby. It's going to be really good the first time I get the call, switch the lights on and then I can go off uh, on my bike. You know, he deserves it. Uh, you know, he's had to jump from bike to bike to bike, which is, it's not fair on him, I and mean, it's not fair on my bike. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. Come on, then. Good morning. It's good, eh? Hey, Dean, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to make it a special occasion for Steve. So, uh... Not often we get into smile. It looks pretty, doesn't it? It's like Christmas. Do you like unwrapping things? <laughs> but why would I have to unwrap anything? We didn't have any wrapping paper, but we thought, isn't that lovely? Oh. What the bike or the tape? Um, the bike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I was going to have ribbon, I should have had a nice colour. Pink. It's gorgeous. Apart from all this blue and white stuff. Very nice. There's a remote buttons on there which runs all your blues or your arrivals and your unlock button now is on this side. When you're at scene with all your blues running, yeah. you can actually leave that running, turn your ignition off, and walk away with your keys. Yeah. Uh, nothing will happen then, the bike will keep running, keep your batteries charged, keep your blues going. And if anybody decides they're gonna steal the bike, as soon as they put it into gear. It'll click it out and the right engine stops. Finishes off. Yep. So the engine stops, saves it any theft. Yep. Nothing you've not seen before. No, it's all well, and, uh, it's yeah. all exactly the same. With me. Yeah, we're having uh, sat navs given us for when we go outside the city. So instead of relying on A to Z maps, which we do at the moment, uh, we're going to have some sat navs. They're, they're no good to us around the city. Um, that that's all local knowledge. The, the problem we have is that we start driving on pavements and through pedestrian ways, uh, the sat nav gets confused and doesn't know what you're doing. <laughs> I got my nice shiny bike and I got my tattered old map pocket. <laughs> It is a joyous day. One is he's happy, 
and that doesn't happen very often and we can see look he's just he's there with a dirty big grin on his face <laughs> looking i am i'm happy so no it's no it's, it's, it's very very good excellent don't, don't get too close <laughs> i'm touching it <laughs> don't touch that bit <laughs> no you can't touch that bit i want to put a handprint on no no, no you can't get your hands <laughs> off it <laughs> I'm going to have to polish that again then. Just don't forget, new tyres. New tyres. New tyres. I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go to the other box. It's got two brand new tyres on it. Um, bike tyres are different to car tyres. Uh, you have to sort of break them in, uh, bed them in. They need sort of 50 mile on the clock. So for the, the first uh, little while, it's just a matter of taking it easy, aware that the tyres are new. and. You know, don't throw it into bends because you stand a chance of just sliding away. Still to come. Like a cop, PC Lucy Watson races to help restrain a man reported to be wielding an axe. Hello. And Mark what Hayes is called to a patient in police okay. custody. How are you feeling at the moment? The South End on sea on the Essex coast. Home to 150,000 people and a holiday destination for millions more. It's the home patch of Biker Cop, PC Lucy Watson. On her BMW R1200RT, she's ready to respond at speed to any call-out. A 999's come in. A man's reported to be wielding an axe on the outskirts of town. Several local units have raced to the scene. Lucy's been called as backup. If the situation turns ugly, it will need plenty of manpower. All we know at the moment is um, Chep's come out and uh, threatened some people with an axe and he's thrown some petrol around. Which one is it, mate? It's the black address there, there's another way down the side. If you can go and join our around the yep, there, perhaps. Do. Round the back of the house, officers are already dealing with the man, but he's not cooperating. It's a dirty drug they did no good. Why, why am I able to put up this? Listen, no, mate. I'm not resisting. My hands are open. My hands are open and I'm not resisting you. You're under arrest for suspicion of. I don't believe it. Do you want to bring the car around here? No, we just walk around. Is that guys still around there, is it? No, they've all gone in, but it's. Okay, we'll take them around the Oh, what, they got more rights than me if they can do it right. Calm down. Come on, mate. Come on. This is not worth it. No. Relax, mate. There's no need for this at all. Try and relax, mate, right? Oh, I'm not sure I'm relaxed. You need to relax. Stop screaming. What are you going to do? Police use leg restraints to control the man. Right, mate, get your legs out now. Do it. Put your legs out. Stop resisting. Why? What are you going to do? Speak, mate. Go. No. What's the worst you can do? Right. And I'm dealing with a scum over there. Get your arms out now. Has anyone requested a van? Yeah, I've got yeah, one. Yeah. Of course, you saw Yes, I can. Yes, I can, because you were using excessive fault. Oh. I've got an heart condition. Yeah. Yeah. I told you. Good. Well, calm down then. Fault. Chill, man. Chill. Is the van coming? It's on its way. A couple of minutes. You all right, mate? Fix me. Oh, I'm not You're all right. Have you got my spray yet? Your wife's getting it for me. It's with it. It'll be too late. Have you got angina? I've got an, yes. So you know you need to calm down, don't you? If you've got angina, you need to calm down. 
Can you breathe all right? It's no pressure on him at all. No. I don't know if it's their blood being scamming on the one on the floor. You're the one that was acting aggressively though. I've tried to explain to you, if you calm to us, we can sort it out, but you were, you were aggressive. Hence why you're handcuffed and on the floor now. Get a GTN spray off of her. Can you, can you run back indoors and just get a GTN spray off the wife for us? Have you got any other medication in there that you have to take? Yeah, I've got loads. Do you take aspirin or anything when you get yeah, chest pains? Yeah, I've got everything. We're going to need all this medication in boxes, aren't we? In my wallet, there's a list of what I take for the we, we need to bring. If you go into custody, you'll, you'll need to bring the lot. All over, I'll pop your dog. Have you got pain in your chest now? Yeah. Do you want to sit up? Yeah. I've got your spray. I'm not going to take you out of the handcuffs because of the way you work. Can you spray it under my tongue? Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll spray it. Is it easy to get set up? Can you spray one first? Yeah. Um, not too young. You just got to go under. I know. I used to be a paramedic. I need to. Yeah, don't go in. That's not coming out. You've got to spray it square. No wonder you're not still not a paramedic, are you? I've never given it someone lying on the floor and face down in handcuffs, though. If we sit you up, I can straighten the handcuffs, okay? But I can't do it there. It's not practical for me to do it. Are you going to sit and behave yourself? Yeah. Get onto his side. Bring your knees up here, mate. Come on. Sit. Sit. Push against me, mate. That's it. Push up. That's it. <laughs> just go and walk. Do little steps. Keep your eyes closed, mate. Keep Take you around the other side. Just little steps. Just little steps. No rush. You're going to hop, are you? Put you in. Ask first, mate. They're hiding me glasses. Yep. Where are they? They're on the bonnet of the car. Oh, <laughs> it's another tough day on the beach. Now, but this biker cop, who's also a mum and a <laughs> grandma, <laughs> takes it all in her stride. Doesn't get my adrenaline going. Um, unless I feel personally threatened. Um, my adrenaline doesn't really go. That's, that's just an, another job. We deal with that sort of thing on a regular basis, but it's not uncommon. I don't think I did much wrestling. I think the boys did most of that. <laughs> it's not easy dress like this, but um, no, it's just one of those things that you do. The man was cautioned for resisting arrest. No further action was taken. Should we go and have some tea? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a little scuffle before tea, is there? Birmingham. It's the hottest spring since records began, and everyone's out enjoying the weather. But some might have been overdoing it. On patrol today, paramedic Steve Harris. A man's collapsed just a few hundred meters away. You could be better. You had a drink? You had anything else? No. Just, just alcohol. Yeah, just yeah. Alcohol. Yeah. All right. Okay. What are we doing? Eh? Prices of us is off. Uh huh. All right. Do you want to get down the hospital? You think you need to? You're going to look after it? Yeah, yeah, look after yeah. Him, What I want to do is see you up on your feet to make sure you see whether you're steady enough to uh, be left or... Yeah, I'm steady enough. Believe me, I'm steady enough. I don't want you to fall over and hurt yourself, do I? Eh? No, of course not. No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Come on, you show me. A bit weak, but I'm yeah. a bit worried, but I'm, I'm standing, I'm, I'm yeah. fine, I'm fine. This. All right, have a seat. Yeah, and instead of being on your knees, why don't you sit on the step? Be a bit more comfortable for you, wouldn't it? Don't 
Thank you. Right I, don't, I don't want to be bothered to you. I know, you, you ain't. Mm. Yeah, we're just worried about you, aren't we? Thank you, thank you. Are you going to look after him? Yeah, I'll look after him. Yeah. Sure. Alright then. Mate, it's my mate. So. Alright, we'll sort the bits out and we'll let you go on thank, your own. Thank you, lads. Alright, mate. Thank you. He tells me that uh, he drinks regular anyway. I think it's just the warm sunshine. Had a drink, he's had a lie down, a little nap. He's woken him up, uh, he's steady on his feet. Uh, he's got a colleague with him, uh, a friend who's going to look after him, make sure he's okay. I see no point in him going to hospital. He doesn't need to go, and he himself is agrees with that. So I'm quite happy for him to be uh, left in the city, left to his own devices, and he'll make his way home. station. He knows only too well that not all patients are good natured. Been told that someone's fallen over on the platform. Two and two over. How you mate? How are you doing? Hey? Well what why are you lying on the floor? You fell over. Yep, okay. And what made you fall? Did you get light-headed or did you trip up or...? Well, I, I did it quite a lot. You, f you fall over a lot? Yeah. Yeah. And have you hurt yourself this time? I will not. No, not this time, no. No. Do you have any medical problems? Yeah. Like what? I'm drinking. Drinking? Yeah. What's it going to do with you? I'm only just talking to you. You don't want me to talk to you, that's fine, mate. I ain't interested anymore, mate. If you haven't hurt yourself, you said you hadn't. So you're back thirty. Is that new today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. What am I? I'm the paramedic that's been called because you're on the floor. Yeah, I know it's on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing here. Right, we better get you up the hospital then, hadn't we? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll get an ambulance. We'll take you up the hospital. Ambulance required. Uh, gentleman intoxicated, fall, abusive. Over. Are you abusive, mate? Well, you were to me. No, you was abusive to me, mate. No, I wasn't. Just talking to you, asking me questions, being as nice as pie. I, I, I tell you what, I don't need to be abusive or anything like that. Well, as I remember, you was the one swearing at me first. I don't swear, mate. Despite the man's attitude, his complaints of back pain mean Steve has to get into hospital. We got a wheelchair here for you, so if we help you up, and we can pop you in the wheelchair and take you up onto the street, is that all right? Here we go. That's it. Hold on, mate. Mm -hmm. Mark's arrived to help Steve move the man. Push. You try to talk to him nicely, you try to make yeah, conversation with him, and they just turn on you. So, you know, it's a matter of you just have to shrug your shoulders, ignore what they're saying. You know, uh, I'm not saying he needs hospital treatment, but we can't leave him here. Uh, you saw just as he was trying to get off the floor, he's not steady, he's not capable of walking away. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to take him down the hospital. They'll keep him a couple of hours or so till he uh, sobers up a bit and he's a bit more uh, mobile, and then I presume they'll let him go. A 999 call is coming in. Another man's collapsed. But this time, there's something familiar about the patient. Hello. Uh, We're here again. Uh, yeah. Well, better than you, because this is the second time I've been called to you today. No, uh, you could you keep calling me out. You know? Yeah, but you're, you're lying on, you're on the floor, right? You you know you're asleep. Everybody walking past thinks you've collapsed. 
And that there's a, there's a problem with you. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Have you had anything to drink since we met? No. No? Unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> what do you mean, unfortunately? Unfortunately, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. All right, you're going to move on then. There's nothing yeah, for Steve to do yeah. but send the man on his way. You want me to help you up? No, no, you, you tell me where you're going, and I'll ne next when I get the call, I'll know that I'm coming to you. <laughs> Is that I sleep? I know, I know, I know that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure instead of phoning 999, if they came over and asked you that you were, whether no, you were it's okay. Not, no, yeah. it's not so it's, that it's, people didn't care, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. but, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'll carry on, I'll carry on moving and I'll, I'll see what happens. I don't know what happens next. I don't know. Second time today. Uh, it may not be the last. Um, he's, he lives on the streets, he's homeless. He's had a uh, he's had a drink today. Uh, it's obviously a, a nice, pleasant, warm day. The sun sh shining. He's a bit tired. The trouble is, he just sits himself on the pavement, falls asleep. Passers by, members of the public are going past, become concerned, and found 999 ambulance. He doesn't need hospital treatment. Uh, it may be that we're going to have to persuade him to go, just to get him off the streets. Uh, but at the moment he's just left the scene again. He'll have a wander around till he gets tired, sit himself down somewhere else, and we may well meet him again. Already today, Steve spent nearly two hours dealing with these two men alone. Still okay. to come, Mark Hayes races to a sixth man in custody. Biker paramedic Mark Hayes is responding to a 999. A man needs urgent medical attention in police custody. The roads are busy, and Mark's journey isn't helped because several streets in the city centre have been closed due to an unstable crane. Surrounding roads are busier than usual. But on the bike, Mark can cut through the traffic, and his mile-long journey takes him just under four minutes. How are you doing? You're right. Hello, my name's Mark. I'm a paramedic. All right. How are you feeling at the moment? Tell me why. Say again. Sorry. Pressure in your head. And how long have you had that for? Ages and ages. How long is ages and ages? Uh, Are we talking days? Are we talking weeks? Months? Months, months, months. Oh, right. So it's an ongoing problem. Yeah. OK. Pain anywhere else? Legs, feet. I'm so swollen up. OK. And how long has that been I haven't, for? I haven't uh, jacked up for ages. Okay. Um, so, so like used to. This type of swelling and is associated over, with over injecting sort of drugs, right. but it could be an okay. infection or even right. gout. So is there anything new today? Is there any new symptoms? Three times. No, no, no. So it's all ongoing stuff. That, and presumably you've been seen by a doctor previously for these symptoms? I keep trying to, but I keep forgetting. How long have you been with yourselves? Uh, only... About three hours at the most. Three hours. We'll, we'll see what we find. All right. Yeah. What have you had today? What have you uh, taken today? We had alcohol so far. How much alcohol? Uh, half bottle of What day is it today? So have you on Tuesday. 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 Silly question, where are you? Police yeah. station. Okay. When was the last time you used? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. Do you use anything else? Yes. The man's history of drug and alcohol abuse has Mark worried. Drug use does extensive damage to all parts of the body and can lead to major complications. You think warm? So OK. They're very warm to touch. I'm all swollen up. My legs are swollen. 
You inject into your feet, obviously. I used to. And your legs? Legs, groin, everything. But uh, the veins all collapsed. Any pains in your chest at all? Sometimes. When was the last time you had pains in your chest? Uh, every time I get angry. Will you do me a favour? Will you just lie down with your head up this end, flat on your back? I want to do an in-depth ECG, if that's OK. Yeah. It tastes so... Yeah. Can I just pull your T-shirt up to pop some electrodes on your chest? Is that all right? Yeah? Yeah. Oh. OK. It's all right, you've got a hairy chest. I'm going to have to shave your chest so I can get the electrodes to stick on. All right, sir. Watch your hands a second. With so many symptoms and the complicated medical history, Mark wants to check for serious heart problems. A 12-lead electrocardiograph will give Mark a detailed readout of what's going on with the man's heart. Uh, it looks like he's got what's known as a bundle branch block, uh, right bundle branch block. Um, the um, electrical pathways within the heart, if there's an abnormality, it'll try and find a different route, and that's uh, then shown um, on the ECG. Um, that could be a long standing thing that you know, this gentleman may or may not be aware of, uh, but nevertheless, that's something that will be investigated just as a, a precaution. An ambulance crew has arrived to take the man to hospital. How are you doing, mate? You're all right. You're all right, mate. The ambulance crew are here now. We're going to pop you off to uh, Dudley Road City Hospital. All right. Yeah. Can I just ask you? You going to the bathroom, okay? You're passing water out in your bowels. Uh, I can't stop crapping. You can't stop. Is it diarrhoea or is? It... And how long has that been for? Uh, Could only be in the How long since since you used methadone. And how long have you been on methadone? Oh, I've been a junkie since I was so much. Okay. Methadone is often used to treat heroin addicts, but diarrhoea is a common side effect. Just wrap this around you the best we can. <clears throat> right. yeah. Complications from injecting heroin are cellulitis and gangrene, both bacterial infections that eat away at the soft tissue. The man will be escorted to hospital by the police. Mark's used to dealing with the aftermath of drug abuse, but as a father of two, it never fails to bother him. I do worry that, you know, um, there's always the possibility that they could be influenced and, and go off the straight and narrow. But I've got a good relationship with my children and I would hope that uh, that would never happen. Um, and if it were to happen, um, I think I'd go for some shock tactics to try and, you know, scare them off. Um, God knows I've been out to enough dead people from drugs overdoses. I can tell them many a tale, and uh, I would hope that that would be enough to scare them. Dawn has had another fit since leaving hospital, right, but is hoping they won't keep happening. The man hit by the bus didn't have serious head injuries, but had hurt his knee. As a floor fitter, he had to rely on his good knee, but that now needs surgery. The man with swollen feet was kept in hospital for observation. He's being treated for stress and has been charged with criminal damage.